Okay, hello class, welcome to lesson six. We're gonna be graphing with a combination of transformations. So in the last lesson, we looked at uh, graphing just with one transformation at a time, uh, the effect of each um, number, depending on where it is. Uh, now we're gonna have, we're gonna combine some things. Um, and so here, like we're just actually gonna start with two points. Um, so like you've got two points, and we're gonna put them in a little table and put them on the graph as well. So the points are one, two, and four, one. Um, these are not points from a base function, um, but they're, but this is going to basically show you, um, just with two points, exactly how to do transformations. So first off, it says to horizontally stretch them by a factor, by, stretch them. And so what that means is we're going to actually like pull them away from the x-axis, double, so the two. So instead of at x equals 4, we're going to have x equals 8, and instead of x equals 1, we're going to have x equals 2. Um, and so you're, you're, and then at the same time, we're going to vertically stretch them, so we're going to triple. So instead of a height of 2, it becomes a height of 6. And the other one, instead of a height of 1, we're going to be at a height, of, a height of 3. So you can see, vertically, it's being pulled away. And so when we say stretch, we don't mean like the circles stretching out. We just mean the x or y values are, are like, like getting bigger, uh, stretching out by a, by a by multiplying. Um, and so here what we did in the table of values is we stretched x uh, by, by 2 and then vertically stretched y by multiplying by 3. Um, and then horizontal shift right 4, we really just take the point and shift it to the right 4 and then shift it up 1 and so we get the point um, sorry, from here, right 4 up 1, right 4 up one, and then these become our new points. Now if these red ones were the initial function, the that would be like f of inside here. The blue ones would be after these transformations happen. So now the question is just what, what a, k, d, and c values do we actually have to, to have these transformations? Vertical stretch, we have to have a three, so we have to have a three on the outside. That's a vertical stretch. Um, horizontal stretch, we actually have to have like the reciprocal or the opposite. Um, so we actually have to have a half here to do a horizontal stretch. Um, and then right four would be a minus four, and then up one would be a plus one. Okay. So we're gonna learn about these and just by just by practicing. So we'll start with this one, the root x graph. The base function is the square root of x. Um, the base points are those 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Don't worry too much about this root. It's just the f of x or the y value. Um, it's just showing that it's we're just looking at the base points, which are just the square root of the x values. Um, so if we plot those points, you shouldn't be surprised to see that shape there. Um, now the question is, what are the what's the 2 and the 4 doing? Uh, the 2 is a vertical stretch. Um, and the four is a horizontal, a vertical shift. So just doing the vertical stretch before the shift, because shift's actually easy to do on the graph. Uh, we just multiply all the y values here by two. Um, and so the y's are getting doubled, zero, two, four, not, six would be the new ones. And we can plot those points, um, the new points really, zero, zero, one, 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 two, four, four, nine, six. And you can see that vertical stretch getting pulled away from the, the x-axis. And then the plus four just means left four. Um, and so we just take those orange points, uh, those, those points we just had, and move them all left four, and we got a new graph. The next one is the one over x graph, it's the base function. Uh, the base points, there's six of them. Um, we sub in negative two to two uh, to the one over x equation um, or function. And so we sub in negative 2 to 2, but we don't sub in 0, so instead we sub in negative a half and a half. And the points we get out are the base, is the base 1 over x graph. Notice that we've got this asymptote at y equals 0 and x equals 0 that we, that we approach, but we never touch. Um, there's no stretches here, it's just shifts. Um, so the, the, the minus 2 means shift to the right 2. And so what we're going to do is we're going to change this vertical asymptote. We're just going to shift it over to. Um, and so I just draw that orange line there as the, the vertical asymptote change, like the axis just shifting right to. And then, and that's just to capture that key feature of the 1 over x graph. 
And the plus three is vertical shift up three. So the ver horizontal asymptote will change from y equals zero to y equals three. And so we get this horizontal line at y equals three. And then we just take each point. Uh, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can just plot these points as if this was zero, zero. Um, so they still go uh, left two and down a half, left one, down one. Or you can just take each of these points and move them. Um, and you'll see uh, that shape uh, just as you move them one at a time. Just be careful as you move them. Just count right two up three, right two up three, right two up three, six times. Uh, the next one, the base function is the absolute value. Um, so the transformations, uh, the negative, we've got the negative sign and the three. And so um, the absolute value base points are just that V shape, negative two to two. Um, the three is a horizontal compression. Um, we need smaller x values to get to the same y values. So um, we, would, we wouldn't want negative two to two. We want negative two thirds to two thirds um, every third. And so we got a horizontal compression. And then the, the negative sign is a vertical reflection. So to deal with that in the table of values, we multiply all the x's by a third, or divide them all by three, and then multiply all the y's values by a negative. And when we plot those new points, um, that's so the orange graph isn't actually there. It's just horizontally compressing. And then vertically reflecting just kind of does a reflection in the bottom there, um, which is these points here. So I didn't. I didn't actually show the points for the orange, but we just did it. Um, that tells you that you can do it right on the graph without looking at this table. You can just like move everything, divide all the x's by, by 3 and, and estimate where that is. Um, and then notice that like the point 3, 3 would have been nice because like we're going to divide by 3. So 1 comma, th like 1 comma negative 3 is going to be a point. 1 comma 3 is going to be a point. Um, the base function here is the x squared graph, um, so just one at a time. So these are the points for x squared, square all the inputs, negative 2 to 2. Um, and then um, just go through the transformations. We got a vertical reflection and a stretch with the a value. Um, and so the a value is going to, if we multiply all the y values by negative 2, um, you can see these orange points show up. Um, they at the same time as this, this is a little bit different than the last one. They do it all at once uh, where you've just got like negative two comma negative eight is all the y values multiplied by um, negative two at the same time. So you can see the reflection and the stretch at the same time. You can see the orange graphs a little bit taller, a little bit skinnier than the, than the red graph there. Um, and then we've got a horizontal shift right three and a vertical shift up five. So we just go with every one of those orange points. We just go right three and up five. And you still get that parabola um, U shape there. Okay. Number five, the root graph, it's the root function. And so uh, your transformations, um, so the base points of the root function are 0, 0, 1, 1, 4, 2, 9, 3. Those are what we'll always start with. Uh, we have a horizontal reflection, no stretches, uh, just the reflection. Um, and so really what happens is just the x values become negative. And so the orange graph is now those x values become negative. And then this guy is going to shift everything down 4. So we just take each point and shift it down 4. And notice I could, I could subtract 4 from all these y values, but um, it's just as quick to just take every point and shift it down 4. Okay. Uh, the next one's 1 over x again, um, so the base points are just like we saw before. Um, and the negative sign is vertical reflection, so we can multiply all the y's by a negative, um, which means that like the, uh, the lines, if, or the bars, if you will, it, like they become reflection. Uh, notice that the horizontal reflection looks the same. Um, it's just a negative on top versus the bottom. It still kind of does the same thing. Um, but this, this, this part is kind of being reflected up here. Um, and notice I didn't actually do that in the table of values. You don't have to. Like you can just kind of reflect it over the x-axis, uh, which is what a vertical reflection is. And then left 3, so that asymptote is going to change um, from x equals 0 to x equals minus 3. 
Um, and then we're going to have those same points, just all shifted left three. And so it's going to look like that. Number seven, the base function is the absolute value again. So you got that V shape. Um, the two is a vertical stretch. Uh, so you can multiply all the y's by two. And so double them all. And so you can see that's really the shape change. And now we just, since we're done with our stretches and our, and our reflections, um, we just now have to shift. So we can shift right six and down five. And so you can do that at once. Just take, just be careful and shift every point right six down five. And it'll look like that. And the last one is an x squared. Uh, there's only one transformation here. Um, and so there's the, the U-shaped parabola. Um, the one half, uh, realize that that actually horizontally stretches it. And so we're going to multiply all of our x's by 2. So I'm not actually going to show the table of values this time. I'm just going to like stretch them all out from the y-axis, so if it's this way, and we're just going to double the x values. So instead of 1, we're going to be at 2 comma 1. Instead of 2 comma 4, we're going to be at 4 comma 4. And so we can see all of the x values really just horizontally stretching out. And, uh, and that's it. Like, um, so that's, uh, that gives you basically an intro to some of these transformations, and so it's important to practice them. And we're going to do some more practice um, in the next